Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 Builder 2236. Now before we dive in, I just want to sort of talk a little bit about what these build videos are and what they're going to be going forward because these new builds rarely have anything new in them that's worthy of a video. Um, over the course of many weeks and months, little things do add up and then eventually there is enough to talk about in one video. But week over week, there's just not enough in the new builds to warrant doing an actual video walkthrough of them. Um, so we're now at that point again where it's been long enough where all the little changes that have been added over the last few weeks and months can be shown, showcased in a sort of montage in one video, which will be this one. Uh, but in addition to that, I want to start going a little bit off script. No longer am I going to take the change logs as gospel. I'm going to try and showcase hidden features and stuff in these builds as well. Stuff that Microsoft doesn't want you to see yet. And that's simply because... Most of that stuff is the cool stuff, the bigger changes that Microsoft isn't ready to announce publicly, yet for some reason are hidden in the builds. So that's what we're going to do today. We'll start off with all the actual official minor stuff that Microsoft has been talking about um, over the last few months, uh, and then we'll go on to the hidden stuff that hasn't been mentioned in the change logs yet. Uh, those features, of course, are more experimental and may never ship. Uh, but that's fine that's you know they're still in the builds we can still talk about them so with that in mind let's get started so this is build 2236 as i mentioned there's nothing new specifically with this build microsoft mentions that you can now change the display's refresh rate in the modern settings app but you've been able to do this on version 2004 and 20h2 for a while now so that's really not technically new you can see here the refresh rate option is now here and i can change that to whatever my display supports so that's nice but again not really new so let's move on to some actual new stuff that has shown up over the last few weeks. Uh, first up is Skype Meet Now, uh, which is now built into the taskbar in the system tray specifically with this little icon here. If I tap on that, I get this sort of pop up that says Meet Now. Reach people in an instant with Meet Now. No signups or downloads needed. Uh, and from there, I can create a meeting or join a meeting. So if I press on Create a Meeting here, that will open up my browser of choice. Uh, and Skype will load up a meeting and I will then be able to uh, invite my friends and family to a meeting. It takes a little bit to load, uh, but once you're done... So I just tap on yes here to give uh, Edge permission to use my webcam and microphone. Let's turn off my webcam and microphone for now though. And now we can set up the meeting. So I can change the name of the meeting. So I can say, talk with me. Uh, I can also share the link with friends. So this is all I need to get people to join the conversation. Just copy that link and send it to my friends. Uh, we can also share the invite directly using this drop down menu. And then I can press start meeting and I'm now in a meet now meeting powered by Skype. And this works just like a normal Skype conversation. We have the ability to uh, have a text chat. We have emoji reactions. We can raise our hand if you want. Uh, you can do all sorts of different things as well. And we can also add new people on the fly. Uh, but yeah, that's essentially how that works. No downloads required as the pop up mentioned. I can just get in and start talking with friends or family with a few clicks and it's really nice. This is to compete with Zoom and stuff. Um, I find it weird that this is in the dev channel and not in 20H2, which is coming very soon, but whatever, it's here in this build and I think it works really nicely. So once again, that's the Meet Now feature. You can also use it to join a meeting. If you click on that, it will take you to your web browser of choice again. Then you can paste in the link that you have, press join. And. <laughs> And this will take me to my own meeting that I created. But here you go. We can go to the meeting in other chat form or start the meeting ourselves, blah, blah, blah. And that's how that works, which is pretty nice indeed. You can hide it. If this is something you're not ever going to use, you can actually hide the button and that will disappear like that. And if you want to re-enable it, you can press on taskbar settings here. Go down to, where is it? Turn system icons on and off. Scroll down and then turn meet now back on. You can also just hide it in the overflow menu if that's what you prefer, uh, which is super nice. Let's actually put this back to where it was and move on. So another change Microsoft is testing is dark mode in the search UI. Believe it or not, when you have dark mode enabled, the Windows search UI still uses a white interface on the shipping version. But in dev channel, that's now changed if we go in here and enable dark mode real quick and start searching for something. Let's search for, say... Uh, let's search for me, Zach Bowden. You'll see that the search results and the Bing results here are in dark mode now, which makes a lot more sense. Unfortunately, the search, the actual um, scroll bar here is still using white mode. But hey, this is pre-release software. They have plenty of time to change that. Hopefully they change that and they don't forget. But there you go, dark mode in the search UI, uh, in the search results page, sorry, uh, finally 
looks pretty cool. Now, while we're in the settings app, let's real quick jump over to the system area, go down to about and take notice of a new addition to the device specifications list here. And that's your graphics card. So as you can see, I'm running an Intel HD Graphics 620. This is integrated graphics, of course. But if you're using a dedicated GPU, that will show up here as well. Uh, and all this basically does is now show you what graphics card you have installed previously. That wasn't information that was listed here. It just showed your processor installed RAM. But now it shows you a graphics card as well, which is nice to see. If we move over to storage here and go down to manage disk and volumes, Microsoft is building out a modern version of the disk management tool uh, that's been part of Windows 10 for quite some time. So the disk management tool is this. Some of you may recognize it. This is a very old tool that's been part of Windows for a very long time here. They are rebuilding this in the modern settings app. And so far, this is what it looks like. It's very bare bones, which is good to see. The whole point of the dev channel is to see features in their bare bones state and see them build and get better over time. Uh, so, but here it is, here's what it looks like. This is my internal SSD here. I can press some properties. It tells me everything I need to know about it. There's some advanced disk properties, which will open up a legacy control panel applets. We also have our drive health, our current temperature here. Uh, and we can also do things like partition certain parts here as well. So if we go into uh, properties here, we can actually change the size of the drive and actually partition this up if we really want to, which is super nice. We can also change the label, which you probably shouldn't do for the main C drive, but you can do it here. You can also add NTFS paths if you want to. You can also turn on BitLocker quite easily through here and all of that good stuff. So once again, very bare bones, but that's good to see in the dev channel. That's the whole point of a development channel is to see features in their early states. Um, hopefully this will improve over time. But in addition to that feature, Microsoft is also working on a storage health monitoring uh, service, which will essentially pop up a notification whenever Windows thinks your drive is starting to die. And that will give you a chance to back up your data and replace the drive uh, rather than just Windows giving up because the drive has failed and it's too late. So Windows will try and let you know as early as possible now when the drive is starting to fail so that you can recover as much data as possible before the drive completely gives up, which is super nice. If we jump into the apps area in settings here and go down to default apps, and then if you press on default apps by file type, Microsoft has added a search bar here now. So you can now search for the specific file type without having to scroll through the incredibly long list of file types that Windows has uh, installed uh, through first and third party applications. So there we are. That took a really long time to load. <laughs> I don't know why, but there you go. Here's the search bar. You can search for one. So I can do MP4 and there is MP4 or 3P, is it 3GP? Yeah, 3GP, there we go. Stuff like that, you can now search for it rather than having to scroll through this incredibly long list that goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, uh, which is nice. Uh, another new change Microsoft is testing is with the out of box experience. They've added a new page which allows you to customize your device. There's six different categories, gaming, schoolwork, family, entertainment, creativity, and business. And you can choose one, two, three, all of them if you want, or none of them. And whichever, whichever categories you choose, Windows will do its best to customize your desktop experience for you when you hit it for the first time. So for example, if I choose gaming, entertainment, and creativity, it may decide to pin things like the Xbox app, uh, the movies and TVs app, um, and the Paint 3D app to the taskbar by default. It also give me a start menu tile interface that's been organized and arranged specifically for those categories. If I chose schoolwork and business, then that may decide to put office on the taskbar and give me a, a much more productivity focused start menu and stuff. So this feature isn't actually functional according to Microsoft yet. The UI is in, but the actual ticking the boxes and pressing accept doesn't actually work yet. Um, but when it does, hope we should start seeing stuff like that when setting up Windows. So that's all of the notable official stuff that Microsoft has been talking about in the last few weeks and months. Uh, so that, now let's move on to some of the stuff they haven't talked about yet. Some of the more interesting stuff, in my opinion. Let's start with the biggest one, a brand new out of box experience. So I'm going to cut to footage that I captured earlier. But this UI you're seeing here. Uh, is uh, the out of box experience that's hidden in the latest Insider Preview builds. It's not enabled by default. Microsoft hasn't announced it in the change logs, but if you do some hacking around, you can get it to work. And uh, this is what it looks like. If this UI is familiar to you, that's because you've seen it before on Windows 10 X. Microsoft is bringing bits and pieces of Windows 10 X over to Windows 10, uh, and they've already done it with the touch keyboard and the emoji picker, which we showcased in our last build video. Um, and now they're working on bringing it over the out of box experience, or at the very least experimenting with bringing over the out of box experience. Again, it's not been announced, so it may never ship, but hey, look, it's here in the build and this is what it looks like. 
Works just as you would expect. You can click through the settings and stuff. It's a much cleaner UI. Cortana is no longer part of it. And um, it's very fluid and very nice. It's missing some of the shell parts that Windows 10X had, like there's no date and time in the bottom right corner and whatnot. But it still works as you would expect. And uh, I think it looks really nice. So hopefully they polish this up and start shipping it to insiders very soon because I'd love to see this officially um, because it's just way better than the old one. So another change Microsoft appears to be testing that hasn't been announced yet are changes to the splash screen UI when opening modern apps. So every modern app has a splash screen. You click on it, you get the logo as it's loading, and then the app launches. Um, in previous builds, the color of that splash screen was based on your accent color. But in an upcoming change, hopefully, Microsoft is changing that to be based on your system theme. So right now we're in dark mode, and as you saw there, the settings app had a dark background on its splash screen. Uh, if we change to light mode here, you'll see that we'll also change to light mode and then we can showcase the app again as it launches. Give it a second, there we go. So if I press on the settings app again, you'll see now that that background is using the light mode instead of dark mode. If we open up another app here, say feedback hub, you'll see that, yep, there's the white background. Um, let's change to dark mode and showcase the same app again. And minimize you, there we go. Open up feedback hub again. There we go, it's now using the dark mode. So this is a very minor change, but it's a really nice one because if you're using dark mode you, with a light accent color, opening an app would usually blind you because you're not expecting it. Like, oh, blind me, that was really bright. Uh, now it shouldn't do that because if you're using dark mode, it would just use the dark background. Now, not every app has a splash screen and even some of the apps with splash screens don't actually support this yet. Maybe they will in the future. But again, this is a feature that Microsoft hasn't announced, but is currently testing internally and will hopefully be announced very soon. So another change I've noticed is that the hover effect in the task view UI is a little bit different now. It has fluent design effects ever so slightly. It has the reveal effects here, as you can see, and it looks a little bit nicer. In the previous builds, it was a little bit raw, but this one actually has an effect to it, and I think it looks kind of nice. Again, this has not been announced. This may just be an experiment that never ships, but hey, look, it's working in this build, uh, and it seems to be, um, it looks nicer, I think. Fortunately, the actual animations still haven't been fixed, so everything still sort of snaps and changes as you click into them and stuff. But hey, fluent design reveal effects, always nice to see. Uh, finally, the last thing I've noticed that isn't actually working yet is if we go into personalization here, you'll see that there's a new option in the background drop down for spotlight collection, uh, which I believe is going to be the same thing as spotlight, the spotlight option in the lock screen area here, window spotlight, which essentially just pulls the Bing daily image and sets it as your lock screen background. Microsoft may be working on that same feature for your desktop background as well, uh, which is super nice. Again, it's not working just yet, but the option is here in the background drop down menu and hopefully it will start working in a future build. So there you have it. That's all of the official and unofficial stuff Microsoft appears to be testing in the latest dev channel builds. Um, we're hoping to see some big stuff soon. Microsoft has been very tight-lipped on its plans for Windows in 2021. Um, but as as far as I understand it, there are some more significant UI changes on the way. As you saw there, the Windows 10X out-of-box experience is in testing on desktop builds internally. That's a good sign that more 10X stuff is coming over soon. Hopefully we'll see some new sounds as well. Maybe even the new 10X Action Center and whatnot. We're expecting to see rounded corners on things like the start menu and perhaps even app windows. That would be quite a big deal as well. Um, but that's all in the future and none of that's actually in this build yet, unfortunately. But you, you get the idea. Microsoft appears to be experimenting with and planning to bring over some more 10X stuff to Windows 10, uh, which should give the interface a, a a refresh, a, a much needed refresh in my opinion. Windows 10 has become very stale in the last few years. It's still, you know, it hasn't changed much. It still looks like Windows 10. So a design refresh, I think it's needed. It will give sort of people in, in it, will, it gives Windows a breath of fresh air in my opinion. But that's all still to come. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and we shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.